Hey Funky Fam, Liz Granite here to talk to you about one of my favorite ways to cultivate mindfulness that doesn't involve meditating. I'm going to show you how I practice mindfulness with house plans. Mindfulness is the practice of being fully engaged in the present moment. You may have heard the quote, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift, that's why it's called the present. Have you considered though why the present is a gift? Well, most of the suffering that we fussy humans experience, be it fear, doubt, anxiety, stress, is caused by living in one of two places. And no, I'm not talking about a post-industrial capitalist hellscape. I'm talking about either living in the past, where we get caught up in cycles of replaying memories or regretting decisions, or by living in the future, where we worry about a wild world of what ifs. When spending a lot of time and energy in the past or future, it's often evident by the weight of judgment. And for me, that sounds like shooting on myself. <gasps> I should tell him as soon as he gets home. Oh, I shouldn't have told him that. We find ourselves helpless in both of these places, disempowered to change what is already done and at the mercy of who knows what and uncertain future. So the only moment we have any control over, or the only moment in which time and eternity intersect, is right here. It's the present. Here and now is where they keep all the good stuff. This is where peace and joy are possible in exchange for loosening your attachment to your thoughts, lessening your grip on your expectations. Like Funkadelic said. <laughs> present where connections are made, ideas are sparked, insight is gained, creativity is harnessed. When you let go of expectations based on past experiences, you're available to listen to the ways in which life is speaking to you through intuition, five senses, your relationships with people, animals, whatever. By cultivating mindfulness, you're really priming yourself for new information. You get to observe your experience without judgment, and that makes an opportunity for that new experience to take root. When you're not dragging judgment around, your arms are open to catch an insight, to have a revelation, to launch a revolution. Rather than bringing preconceived ideas of how something should or shouldn't be to a situation, like comparing this to that, you simply get to experience the situation as it is. And the benefits of mindfulness are powerful less stress, reduced anxiety, greater peace of mind, deeper connection with yourself, your relationships, and the world around you. Overall, an improved sense of well-being. And over time, those benefits compound. So know that any deposit of energy you make now will multiply, and your future self will thank you. Thank you! You're welcome! So how do we get there from here? One of my favorite ways is with plants. And in this video, I'll show you how to practice mindfulness with house plants in five easy steps. This can be done with any and all house plants, and they'll thank you for it too. Step one, set the stage. Dedicate distraction-free time to getting up close and personal with your plant pals. Silence devices, feed the cats, do whatever you gotta do to eliminate interruptions. Step two, root down. Now it's time to get grounded and root down in the nowness, the isness of this moment. You could do this standing or sitting, whatever feels right for you. If it's available to you, close your eyes and place your hand on your belly or on your chest. Take three to five slow, deep breaths. When you're ready, let your breathing return to its natural rhythm. Bring your awareness to your body, starting at the crown of your head and gently moving down just scan your body from head to toe. No judgment, just awareness. And you may notice physical sensations, discomfort, tightness, ease, or you may become aware of feelings in your emotional body, like you're ready to burst or you feel open and spacious. Just observe, no decisions or actions necessary. When you get to the soles of your feet, imagine, if it's available to you, roots growing downward through the floor, determined to reach land down into the dirt, expanding into the earth itself. This part usually takes me a minute or so, 
and you can take as much or as little time as you need. Step three, look and see. When you're good and grounded, open your eyes and look at your plant or the first plant that you're starting with and really look at it. What do you see when you examine its stem, leaves, flowers? Take in all those colors, each shade. Look at the shapes, lines, curves, angles. Are there any new leaves on the way? Notice any signals your plant is sending. That might look like drooping leaves, brown tips, dusty or crusty leaves, stretching to reach the light, yellowing. Again, no judgment. This is just about observing this beautiful being before you. Step four, touch and feel. If it's available to you, gently push your fingers into the soil. Notice how it feels on your fingertips. Is it wet, moist, dry, soft, hard, silky, rocky? Can you smell the soil too? Most plants don't like their leaves to be touched and some are more sensitive than others. Because unlike humans and animals, plants cannot fight or flee from threats. So instead, their internal defense system kicks in, which uses a lot of energy. And scientific studies suggest that repeatedly touching plants can reduce their growth by up to 30%. Truth be told, I do sometimes touch the more hardy plants in my herd, although sparingly and usually on days when I know I'm gonna wipe down the leaves. Step five, synthesize and respond. Now it's time to shift into action with that same level of awareness. You just took in a lot of information about your plant. What has your plant told you that it needs? Maybe you're moving on to watering or pruning or dusting. Whatever this next step is for you, bring that same level of awareness to it. So if you're watering, notice the path the water takes when you pour it into the soil. If you're pruning, listen to the sound of the leaf separating from the stem. Really engage with this, this being before you, this thing that exists because you provide its care. As you can tell, you get to know your plants really well when you involve them in your mindfulness practice. What may be less obvious is that you get to know yourself better too, just by being present with your experience. This practice really took root for me during quarantine. I had been a plant mama pre-pandemic, yet the global situation paired with the murders of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, really exacerbated the need for grounding and mindfulness practices for me. I was really caught up in the future, asking a lot of what if questions, and of course, feeling completely out of control to do anything about what was going on. Bringing mindfulness to plant care, it helped me develop a greater sense of agency because I could identify the things that I had control over, like the ways in which I care for myself and my community, and I could also make peace with the realities of where my control ended. And ultimately, I recognized that even though injustice was, is running rampant and that the world doesn't look like I think it should look or could look, doesn't mean that I or you or anyone have done something wrong. Because you can do everything just right to care for your plant and it could be healthy and thriving as a result of your dedication, but then a cat makes its way onto a shelf it has no business being on and sends your precious plant crashing down to the floor before feasting on its foliage. Not naming names here. And this realization, it made space for the overflowing emotions I was experiencing. Once I let go of judgment of how things should be, I was able to grab onto moments of peace and connectedness, certainty and faith, and use those to rebuild my foundation. You'll likely have your own ahas and realizations, maybe even revolutions emerging from you participating with your plants more mindfully. I hope that by sharing this with you, I've given you a new way to practice mindfulness and to be present for the moments of peace and joy safety and security, feeling and healing. Let me know about your mindfulness practices and how this one works for you. I've got so much goodness to share with you. So please like this video and subscribe to my channel so we can stay in touch. I appreciate you and I'll see you next time. Peace y'all.